So recording, there we go. Perfect. Now uh, we can get going with this and we'll go back to this and we'll go to there. And it's not the screen that I wanted. How do I, of course, this is not what I really wanted. Oh my gosh, where did my presentation go? <laughs> you guys, I've lost. Now I'm now I'm not looking good. Where did my meeting go? Okay, hold on a second here. There we go. Perfect. There we go. Now, how do I go back to my there? Okay. Perfect. So um, next thing then. So here is our team teaching approach to biology. Remember, this was uh, for those of you who were at the other meeting about this. This would be a little bit of review for those of you who are new to this meeting and this is your first time. Welcome. Um, I am your uh, Center Daughters biology teacher. My name is Matt and uh, I'll be with them first quarter and then hopefully if things get better, third and fourth quarter. That would be great. Maybe in person even. That'd be wonderful. Uh, so we'll kind of wait and see, but it definitely won't be until the, um, I'll either actually be with your son or daughter first or second quarter, depending upon what hours. First quarter will be hours two, four, six, and eight will be first quarter and second quarter will be one, uh, one, five, one and five. Yep. Just those two. So, um, here's kind of our game plan for team teaching the biology class so that you can kind of see what this looks like. Uh, what we're doing is we're dividing kind of the duties up between there are four teachers, uh, myself, Mr. Bruss, Mr. Monzon, and Ms. Klepper. Uh, we've been working this summer on creating our and redoing our biology content. Um, and one of the things that we've kind of realized through the process, especially of doing a professional development and doing meetings like this, is that it's really hard for one person to be doing all of this. There's 41 of you in this meeting. Um, my biggest class would be 25, which is still having two screens of students. So trying to work the, uh, the waiting room, the chat feature, and teaching all at the same time, what we've decided to do is to have one teacher take the lead on each unit, and they become the lead teacher. They'll be teaching all of the classes for all of the hours. So as you can see here, our first unit is going to be ecology. Mr. Bruss will be taking the lead in teaching all four hours, hours two, four, six, and eight during the course of the day. And then what we have is the other teachers will be what we call TA. Their job is to be, um, one will be doing the um, admission into the sessions, taking attendance. Um, and then we'll also be doing the chat feature, which is really the place that we want our students to be able to um, get the um, help that they want. And so, um, and so when students are asking questions, we want them to be asking it in the chat room so that then, so like as you can see here in fourth hour, there are three teachers who will be working the chat room um, and answering those questions and working kind of one-on-one -on -one with students. So we can message students individually and say, hey, how you doing? What questions do you have? Or I noticed that you may be having a hard time paying attention to something going on. How can I help? Um, but then that way there's three of us who are able to kind of work directly with the, all of the students. So you can kind of see then that in the varying hours, we've got varying levels of help with that. Mr. Bruss is the only one teaching first or second hour by himself. Um, I'm going to be helping him out. Actually, all of us are taking turns being a TA with him for a second hour class. So he'll be teaching the ecology unit, which will actually be um, 14 days long with 11 days of content. Um, and then I'll be teaching the next unit on the DNA unit. And again, I'll be teaching all of the, all of the students. So you can kind of see the student numbers there. Um, I can hold 100 people in a chat session or in a Zoom session. So we should be able to get everybody into it. And then obviously we've got then the teachers being able to help out and support on the backside. Then our last unit, our genetics unit, um, Mr. Monzon will be teaching hours two, four, and eight. And Ms. Klepper will be teaching our, the sixth hour class. And again, as you can see, the varying numbers of TAs in between there. Um, again, part of the reasons why we pick these units is because um, 
Mr. Bruss worked on the ecology unit this summer. I worked in the DNA unit this summer. And Ms. Klepper, Ms. Manzan, Mr. Manzan worked on the genetics unit this summer. So we're kind of teaching and working to our own um, specialties in areas that we've been working on. So uh, we're really excited about this approach. We feel that we're going to be able to really uh, do a much better job of helping students when they need help in the middle of the kind of the information time. So that's one of the things that I think is an important aspect is to the benefit of this is that you're actually, your students are going to be getting more help uh, when there's more teachers involved in this process. Um, the other part of that is that you'll notice that there's like 13 days or 14 days for the ecology unit, but only then 11 content days. The other days that are not the content days will be spent with me then during our doing, doing review then getting ready for what we call our summative assessments. Um, that would be then either the test or a project for each uh, unit. Um, the students will get a choice to either do a summative end of the unit test or a summative end of the unit project, which they'd be working on during the course of the unit. Um, and then the other days there are spent with me kind of helping to make sure that everybody's getting the questions that they have answered, the help with their projects that they need and things like that. Um, I am also gonna be working with your son or daughter during my um, my office hours, which would also be from eight o'clock till 10 o'clock every morning, Tuesday through Friday. And then also again from three to four every afternoon, Tuesday through Friday. So uh, there's a lot of time where I'm gonna be spending uh, working with your son or daughter um, and groups of students in class. Um, one of the things I did wanna clarify, and I think this is an important thing, is it's something that I've been saying to all of you is that, um, I was hoping that we're going to be able to work one-on-one -on -one with students. Um, as of now, um, the district policy is that we're not being allowed to work one-on-one -on -one with students. Um, the reason for that is because it becomes more of a security um, a thing actually for, for me um, more than anything else is that they don't want teachers um, alone with a student in a quote-unquote virtual chat room um, where things could possibly be misconstrued or could, could go wrong. And so we're not doing a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, office hours will look like then where I can get groups of students together, uh, three, four, five students who might have similar questions and we can do a Zoom session together. And or I'll be working with one of the other teachers and we'll be doing office hours together where then students, one student could come in to then and work with both of us at the same time. So uh, again, there's advantages to all of these things, getting a lot of help um, from multiple people along the way will be um, some great things for all of us. So uh, that's where we're going with this idea of uh, our, what we call team teaching approach to biology. We'll be repeating this exact same thing then for the second quarter um, and the exact same uh, units and uh, order and everything like that. So Mr. Bruss will be doing the ecology unit for both first quarter and second quarter. I'm doing the DNA unit for first quarter and second quarter. Um, but I do really feel, and, and we feel that this is a, a great aspect for us to be able to spend more time helping students. Um, as you're seeing tonight, I'm already fumbling around with the, um, with, with the waiting room, with getting closed captioning on, uh, checking the chat, um, making sure that recording is getting done. So you can only imagine if I'm now trying to teach your son or daughter, and I'm trying to do all these things at the same time, how it could be somewhat distracting uh, for me as the teacher trying to make sure that I'm not only teaching the content, but I'm also really helping your son or daughter in the process. So we feel that this is the best way for that. Um, so uh, that's kind of our team approach to it. Um, we can take some questions at the end because I don't have a ton more things to kind of help you with. So if you have some things you can ask me um, at the end of that. Um, let's see here. So the Parent Canvas app, um, I know that this is gonna be a, a really big thing um, for all of you with being, gave, being able to get access to your son or daughter's Canvas account. Um, Canvas, again, will be the format, um, the, what we call the LMS, this is the technical term, the learning management system. Basically, it's a big old repository, a place to put information that your son or daughter can access 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So um, the great part about it is that learning doesn't, um, is not confined by time or space. It can go where you go and it can be flexible when they and or you need it. Um, 
It's one of the things that we're trying to be very mindful of is that while we are doing what we call the synchronous time, like actual class times, um, so like fourth hour is from 11 o'clock to 11.45, we also know and understand that not all students will be able to meet during that time and that students need to be able to access information when it's available and uh, ready for them to be able to do it. So uh, Canvas is a great way for us to be able to do that. In the past, I've been able to put a link at the bottom of my email signature where you could go into Canvas and see things. Um, we have been told by the district that we're not allowed to do that anymore. And the only way for you to be able to access Canvas and the information for your son or daughter is through the Parent Canvas app. Um, now, I found this video, actually the school district put this video out, um, actually it was done by our um, tech ed department. Um, it's been a very nice video. I have also put it in my YouTube page so that you can access this anytime you like. It actually does give you all of the directions as far as how to um, do this. One of the things then that I'm going to do then is, I'm going to try this now. Let's see here. I'm going to do something kind of different. Let's try this. Let's see if this is going to work because I've been, I've been excited to see how this is going to go. You guys get to be the guinea pigs tonight. We are going to, um, let's see here. That's not what I wanted. Nope. Nope. I wanted to, oh, it didn't actually do it. So I was going to share my phone to you to show you what's going on, and I can't do it. So isn't that kind of cool how technology is not working? You guys get to see all of the flaws tonight. I've had two weeks of good run, but tonight I don't know what it is. So um, I, the video actually does a really nice job with it. It's um, a fairly simple process. I did it actually for my daughter, who's in eighth grade. She just got her computer last week from Savannah. Um, we got Canvas into that then. I went through and downloaded the app and followed the process. I did send some directions out to you earlier, I think either yesterday and today, kind of some step-by-step -step with some screen shares. Also to the video, which I'll show you where it's linked so that you can find it, does a great job with that stuff. The only thing that you will need to be able to do is you will need to be able to, um, the last step is going to be requiring you to get into your son or daughter's Canvas account. And you're going to go to the account, which is the actually their picture. And from there, you're going to go to profile, or no, settings, sorry, settings. And then from there, I believe it's in the lower right-hand corner, the very bottom thing, and it's going to say, uh observer pairing or pair with an observer you're going to click on that link and it's going to give you i think like a five or six letter code and that's what you're going to put in at the very end when you do that then your son or daughter's canvas classes will now instantly pop up in your parent canvas app and what you'll be able to see are the following you'll be able to see their calendar which is one of the most important things because you'll be able to see when assignments are due and what assignments are being given. You'll also be able to see if the assignment has been turned in and you'll also be able to see their scores or their grades on those assignments. And that's it. Those are the things you're gonna be able to see. The reason why we've changed this as a district is because we are trying to make sure um, with HIPAA and everything like that, we are trying to make sure that we're hiding and not sharing um, student information with non-parents. So that's the reason why you have to go through the parent app this year versus sharing. There are things like discussions um, that are not going to be shared with you so that there are some, there's work that I'm gonna be able to do with your son or daughter that you won't see um, and have access to, only I will, which is actually an important feature for us to be able to have some, um, uh, you know, students sometimes really need to be able to know and feel confident that what they're sh saying and sharing kind of stays in that place. Um, and that's an important thing that we've been looking at. And so uh, the information, the calendar, the assignment due dates, the grades are the really the important parts I think that you guys are the most interested in knowing about. Um, and that's why you have access to that. Um, and so again, I would recommend you do that after you've gotten your new iPad. There's some of your daughters gotten your new iPad. Um, and 
Um, again, I'll send out the directions as far as when they get in, just get into Safari and they're going to type in vasd.instructure, I-N-S-T-R-U-C-T-U-R-E.com. That takes them to the web version of Canvas. Instructure is the name of the of Canvas. That's the company name. And um, then they'll have to log in with their Google, their VASD um, Google email and their uh, Google password. And then that will get them into Canvas. Then from there, you can finish up with the pairing part with that. If you have any trouble, please feel free to let me know. I'll be more than happy to help. But I do think the step-by-step -step stuff um, and the video, which I'll show you where that is, will really be a huge help for you. Um, so other than that, uh, I think that was, what else did I have left then in my, uh, in my thing here? Let's go back to this. There we go. So the video is here and I will show you where that's at. Um, I could play it now if you'd like. I'm more than happy to play it. If you'd like me to play it, give me a, give me a thumbs up. I'm more than happy to play it for you. It's just a couple of minutes long, but um, oh, we should get to we see already have, it We is. already have it installed. What's that? We already have it installed on the iPad already. We're good to go. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, and I know that everybody does, but um, again, um, I'll show you where you can go to find and access this then uh, from it. So, okay. um, so that's actually right here. So this is where all of my, it's at my YouTube page. Um, so okay. if you click on this, it's going to take you to my YouTube page. And I've created this playlist here for you called 2020-21 Tuesday Parent Meetings, which is where we're at. Mm -hmm. So you're going to find then, so tonight I'm, I'm recording this video and then I'll be uploading it to um, this YouTube. I have also then be putting some videos in that I'm going to be using later on during the course of the year for you guys, um, like how to use Notability, um, just some ideas as far as what I was thinking about for students, like how should they be getting ready for the day, how they should maybe okay. be ending the day, and these are things okay. I'm going to be sharing with them. Um, here's this VHS Canvas for parents. That's the video there that uh, is a really, really good video for you to be able to then go through the step-by-step -step process of putting the parent app on your phone or your own iPad or whatever it is um, to be able to use that. And then um, how to use Notability. And so these are things that I'm gonna be again teaching and going through with the students and things like that. But um, this also can be found, this link can also be found at the bottom of my email signature. So anytime I email you, if you go to the very bottom, it has my contact information in it, which I've just updated by the way as well. I've changed the new address to school and my new phone number with the new prefix in it and everything like that. So it's been uh, a lot of new things, but I've also then added the uh, 2020, I think it's called uh, Tuesday Night Biology Parent Zoom Meetings. And if you click on that link, it'll take you to this playlist again so you can see all of these things. So if you do happen to miss a meeting every Tuesday night or a Tuesday night, you can always go back and access the video there. Um, other than that, I think, if I remember correctly, that was it. That's all I've got for you for tonight. Um, I am more than happy to um, kind of go through and um, look at some um, features of Canvas with you tonight um, to kind of show you what the student part of it looks like and, and some of the features in it. And, and then when you get into your parent part of it, you'll be able to see and make sense of what the calendar looks like and why the calendar is so important then. Um, I will be doing another video and tutorial with you guys. I have to wait until school starts because I can't make a video on how to take an assignment from Canvas, put it into Notability, and then turn it back into Canvas until the quarter actually starts. So that video will be coming later on. Um, so I guess at this point in time, what I'd like to do is this, is um, what questions does anybody have? I'd like to kind of just open this up to, to that. Um, and if you have questions, please, this would be a great time for you to ask them. And otherwise, I am more than happy to kind of go through and show you some aspects of Canvas as well. So I know I've given you a lot of information. What questions do you have for me tonight? I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, so for those morning and afternoon meetings, do students need to sign up for a Zoom meeting? No, uh, good question. And I will show you that in when I show you the Canvas stuff is that there's gonna be links 
Um, and I'll show you two places for them. One that's going to be in the calendar part and two on my homepage and landing page where students will be able to get the link to get into the Zoom meeting for that hour. Um, and that was one of the things I wanted, why I wanted to do a Zoom meeting with the students on Thursday night um, was so that I could tell them that. I'll also be sending out an email to them this weekend so that they can see like, hey, this is where you're going to go. I'll probably also put it in the first email so that come Tuesday the 8th, they are all set and ready to go to be able to get into their fourth hour biology class or their sixth hour biology class or their eighth hour biology class. So. Well, uh, yes. Another question. Yeah. Is somebody asking already? No, go ahead. Okay. So that uh, parent Canvas app, is it only for iPhone and uh, iPad? There's no Android version, right? No, there is. No, there is. So but there's a, there is an Android version as well. I'm sorry. I, I, my world is just Apple products. So uh, yes, but there is an Android version for it as well. So if you just go to whatever uh, app store you go to, you'll be able to find it. If you just type in Canvas Parent, it's got the blue um, wheel on it. Okay. So, yes, it's Android as well. And the last question that the, um, you said that in parent Canvas uh, app, we'll be able to see a calendar yep. and the grades. Correct. Will those things also be in PowerSchool? They will, yes. Um, they will also be in PowerSchool as well. Um, the Canvas, um, the, big, the, the, the really nice feature about Canvas is this, is that because students will be turning assignments into Canvas, you'll be able to see the due date, and then you'll also be able to see pretty instantly whether or not they've turned it in. Uh -huh. And you'll be able to see it much quicker in Canvas than you will in PowerSchool. Got it. So that's one of the advantages of using the Canvas Parent app and having that calendar feature is that you see everything that they're gonna be able to see. So you see not only the assignment, but the due date, you see whether or not they've turned it in, whether it was turned in on time or late, and you also see the score of it. So there's a lot of information you're gonna be able to glean from Canvas. Um, yes, PowerSchool will all be the place where you can go to see the final cumulative grade, but um, it's, um, it's just, it's gonna be an easier place to do it, so. Sure, we just haven't seen it, so uh, you know, it's Correct. hard to imagine what it's gonna be like. Yep. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Who else? Um, question. Yeah. How much homework uh, in biology? Uh, good question. Uh, so, you know, we, we're doing this thing called formative, kind of the, so all of the grades will be broken down into two main parts. One we call formative work, which you kind of be, you kind of consider it to be your homework part. And then the summative, which would be the second one, which are gonna be your tests and your projects. The formative work is worth 20% of their overall grade. And that's it, just 20%. So no matter how many homework assignments we give them or what we call formative work we give them, it's still only worth 20% of their overall grade. Their test or their project will be worth then 80% of their grade. So if you think about the fact that we have three units, ecology, DNA, and uh, genetics, that's either three tests or three projects, and that's gonna be determining 80% of their grade. Then the formative work is making up 20% of that. Now, most teachers in the way that, that we've been thinking about this is that um, we'll probably be giving formative work either a little bit every day or a little bit more every other day. And that formative work is really meant to help students to prepare for both their project and taking the test. So the formative work is an important aspect as far as helping to reinforce the material, helping to get more practice with it so that when they see it on the summative, whether it be the project or the test, they're more familiar with it, they're better with it, um, but it is still worth only the minority portion of their grade. So. Does that make sense? So it's uh, how much work are we getting? Um, so like I'm planning the DNA unit out of 10 content days, I'm probably going to have eight formative assignments. The formative assignment should really only take them about a half hour to do. Um, it shouldn't be long. I know then you think, but then they've got, you know, 
three other classes, which that's a, another half hour. So that's, you know, two hours worth of work on top of the school day. I, this is one of the things that we're all going to have to take some time to figure out and learn. Um, what, that's one of the things that we've been talking about as a team is, are we giving too much work or not enough work? And we actually really won't know the answer to that one until we get going with it. So, um, and if we know that if it's too much work, we actually will scale that back. Um, and likewise too, if it's not enough work, we'll be scaling it forward then. So um, we are trying to make it be uh, appropriate, not stressful. Um, we don't want it to be one that students become overwhelmed, um, uh, stressed out, you know, not wanting to do it, can't do it, things like that. We don't want them to be battles at home between you guys. Um, and so what we're going to find is, you know, if things get to that point, then we will obviously scale some things back. So um, we want to make sure that the experience that your son or daughter is getting and also subsequently you are getting is a good experience through this whole process. So um, the other aspect of two is that we are losing a lot of content time into what we've had traditionally. We are losing, we only have about a third of the time. So we're actually really scaling back what we have traditionally been teaching, even in these units themselves, but we're, we're actually cutting out whole units as well to make sure that we're trying to focus really on what we feel is the important parts, the most important parts of biology. And even inside of those units, then what is the most important content message um, that we want to be delivering and that we want your son or daughters to be then learning. So um, again, this is uh, new for all of us and we're trying to make sure that we're gonna create a product which will help all of, all of them. So, um, so that was a really long-winded answer to a, a, a difficult question about homework, so. Are there any um, materials, like class materials that we, you know, will be receiving for this class? And, okay, oh. so class materials. Okay, now, since this is gonna be a, um, a, an abridged version of this biology course for them. I mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, having concerns about preparedness moving forward for them in terms of uh, the next steps in these classes. I mean, is there, what, what would we be doing as parents to, in, in, with requirements um, for the kids to, you know, get, maybe study more, a textbook, you know, like if, they, if they had a textbook assigned to this, this class, then we could require that you know, one chapter is, is read per day or per week or that sort of thing. Ooh. Well, okay. Uh, yeah. Right, no, I, I understand you know, what you're saying. I understand what, what you're saying. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, so there's a lot of concerns there, which is great. Uh, one, so they're, the only material your son or daughter is going to need is their iPad. Um, everything will be on Canvas. We are creating and, and have already created um, the content that we're using is uh, not something that we've just created this summer. Um, it's something that we've been using for years and years and years. So for those of you who have son or daughters who have gone through my class before, they've, they've been using the same content that we're going to be using um, this year to teach. Um, as far as um, information that's being missed for next classes and next steps and things like that, you're right, that's a, that's a concern that we've brought up um, as a group and as a team ourselves. Um, the, uh, the sciences are kind of an interesting aspect in that one is that the next class, really the next step for all freshmen when they become sophomores would pretty much be chemistry, um, which are then two completely unrelated topics. Um, the only one that we've been kind of somewhat talking about and really looking at would be um, the bio two course or the AP biology course that you, they could take as a junior or senior. Um, but they would have to go through chemistry first. So again, there's, there's a nice bridge there, but um, it's also something that we've been in communication with, with those teachers. They understand that there's, um, they are going to have to do a little bit maybe of back teaching on some things. The parts that we are really making sure that we are hitting, we do feel are the major um, concepts, material information that, um, will be the most beneficial to them getting through a year of high school biology. Um, that being said, again, we know then I've already said that it won't be all of this. Um, that's one of the reasons that we're really hoping that we can be back in school for third quarter is that then we'll go back to our traditional schedule where uh, we have a little bit more time to be able to do things um, and then get into less, especially some of the labs that we're gonna be missing during this time. 
Um, so getting back into school is a really important thing for us, not only for content and lab wise, uh, but really want that experience too. We're gonna do a lot of dissections that we'd like to do fourth quarter, which is a great unit for us. So uh, it's not necessarily a, a loss. One of the units that we are not covering is cells, which they've actually covered fairly well in seventh grade. We tend to do a little bit more in um, like cellular functions, osmosis, diffusion, passive active transport, which uh, while yes, are important aspects in the AP biology curriculum, because I taught that curriculum for seven years, I know it's also something that in talking to Mr. Munch who teaches that class, he also knows too that he's gonna have to go back and, and reteach parts of that stuff. So it is something that we have thought about. Uh, it's something that we feel like we've addressed really well. Um, so no, I don't think that there's a need for you to do additional work on top of that, hire a tutor. No, your son or daughter is gonna be coming out of biology with the material and the information that they're gonna need to know. Um, especially if they go into then those upper level life science classes. So like um, bio two and AP bio, those are the really only two classes. And really you don't get students taking both. They'll take one or the other. So there's not going to be a lot of information missed. It's just, they actually take the information that we teach and expand upon it even more so. So, um, so hopefully that answers your question. It's a, I know that's a, a, it's a really good question. It's a big concern. And like I said, it's something that we've been spending a lot of time thinking about um, and addressing ourselves. So I, I think we're doing a, a really good job with that, so. No, I appreciate that. And I, I think that it changes my perspective in terms of the way I view this class then would be more of like a standalone, which is great. That's fine then. Yeah. And, you know, the, with the idea of textbooks and stuff like that, I mean, I'm, I'll just be honest with you. Textbooks cost so much money um, and it's a resource that one gets old uh, and two, we actually end up losing a lot of them because students don't turn them back, um, especially with what happened in the spring for us with, you know, when we ended school on March 13th, we um, ended up losing a lot of textbooks and we're going to be spending uh, as a department, we're spending um, half of our budget this year just buying new textbooks. The cost of one textbook, um, depending upon the class, even for biology for our class, the cost of one textbook is $75 to $100. Um, for an AP biology or an AP textbook, you're talking $150 to $175 for one book. So it kind of becomes a little bit cost prohibitive for us to be able to give a textbook to each freshman. Uh, when there are over 400 freshmen and you're talking at $500 a pop, right? That's a lot of money that we don't have. So which is why we use Canvas and why we've built our own curriculum and we feel really confident with the product that we've been teaching and using for the last five, six years now. So what else? Okay, I have a question. Um, is, is my understanding correct in looking at the schedule that some students will have you first and third quarter and some students second and fourth? Correct. Correct. Well, I'll just say this. I'll say at least first quarter. So hours uh, two, which I don't have an hour to actually, only have, I have a prep. So it's only hours four, six, and eight will see me first quarter. And then I will see my biology class hours one and five, second quarter. Now we've left second semester up in the air still because we're waiting to see what will happen. Um, again, it's our hope, um, my hope, our biology team's hope that we're gonna be back in school. If we're back at school, we'll have to wait and see what does that look like. Hopefully we can eventually get back to our full schedule where we're gonna be rotating on an every other day basis, kind of back to our normal uh, block schedule. Um, if we can't at that point in time, uh, we do have a plan as far as what curriculum we'll be teaching third quarter and fourth quarter then, which would be the same material like we're doing first quarter and second quarter. So uh, yes. So that's a, again, a, not a very solid answer for you, which is what I've been doing the last two weeks for those of you who've been here. Well, my, my question was actually more about- Let us see some of you are shaking your head when I say that. That's good. And you're paying attention to me. I'm sorry. So my question was more about how does these Zoom meetings weekly apply to students that have you second 
quarter versus students that have you first quarter. Yep. So that was actually one of the things I was going to tell you tonight is that this will be the last meeting that I will be doing with all of you. Um, so I, I purposely did this where I wanted to invite all of my parents because I felt like the information that I was providing to you was really important for the beginning of school. And um, I've tried to hopefully help ease some of the uh, concerns, stress, um, questions that you might have about the beginning of school. Um, but then starting next week, Tuesday, with the first day of school, I will only be doing Zoom sessions then with the parents of the students that I have. Does that make sense? So I will then only be sending out the invite to hours of parents four, six, and eight. And then for hours one and five, I do apologize that I'm not going to be including you in those. But then come the second quarter, I'll be doing sessions with you on Tuesday nights for those hours. And I won't be doing them for two, four, or four, six, and eight. So I'm trying to give a little bit more detailed approach. And one of the reasons why I'm doing that is because I want to be more specific about content being taught, what's up and coming as far as homework assignments, due dates, things like that. So it will be actually more specific and in, in, um, um, to the actual course, not just to the beginning information, beginning of school, welcome to high school thing. So. Another question, the classes, um, the synchronized classes, will they be available online for maybe parents to get back to and watch them if the student didn't understand something or? So um, just like I'm recording this session, the um, sessions will be recorded when content is being delivered. And then the video, just like I'm doing, will be recorded, put up to YouTube, and then a link will be put in the calendar. So uh, if they need to go back and review and look at the information from that day or prior days, they can, and that should be done for all classes, not just mine. That actually should be done for every class that they take. That is an expectation that was taught, uh, told, us, told to us today. Um, it was something that I was already gonna do ahead of time, but every teacher should be doing that for every class. So yes. Recorded information that's being taught will be um, uploaded so students can access that at any point in time. Okay. So quick question here. Yep. Hi. Um, could you please explain the fourth, six, eight hour? Does that mean they have biology three times a day? I don't understand that. Does it mean that I have what three times a day? Does that mean they have biology periods three times a day? Yes. So I will. So your son or daughter, um, if you haven't seen your schedule yet, your son or daughter. The reason why you're here is because your son or daughter has me for a biology class. They have me one hour of the day out of their seven, technically eight classes that they're taking. Um, and so I don't teach a second hour. So I teach a fourth hour and a sixth hour and an eighth hour. Um, so your son or daughter sh should be or could be in one of those hours, but not all of them. So um, they might be in a math class, let's say, you know, sixth hour, maybe they're in my fourth hour bio, they've got sixth hour math, and maybe they have eighth hour phi ed. Um, and second hour, they've got maybe German. So that would be their schedule during the day. They'd only see me one time during the day. Got that. So you teach it three times, but they see you once. Correct. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Yep. What else? Um, yes. What time, um, where does the advisory period fit in this? There schedule? is no advisory this, this semester. Ah, okay. So it, it doesn't. Um, All right. We, um, you know, so I guess one of the things that I would say is this, and I kind of mentioned this to you last time, is that, um, you know, the advisory, kind of the role of the advisory was, I always kind of viewed it as the school parent that, um, you know, my job with my advisory students, so I have 15 advisory students. Um, I meet with their parents, talk with them. Um, I kind of view myself as their son or daughter's um, de facto parent at school, that if they need something, I am there to help them. If they're having trouble with a class, um, I can help them talk with that teacher. Um, I can help them with study skills and everything like that because that's, you know, we were making sure that every kid has one teacher that they can at least 
um, get some help and some resources from. Um, so you're right, in this process now, there is no advisory. Uh, I will say that if you feel like that your son or daughter does need some help, again, I can get you hooked into the student services with that. Um, I did find out today that student services actually does have the one exception as far as being able to do one-on-one -on -one Zoom sessions with students. So um, you can set up a time to meet with your son or daughter's counselor, um, and then uh, you can do a session with them, your son or daughter could do a session with them to get help and things like that. Um, you're still also more than happy and uh, welcome to email me, call me, um, and uh, I can either do the best job that I can to help, I would be more than happy to and love to help, or direct you to the places to get the help. So. I think that's kind of the, the general role of the advisor. So um, I will take on that de facto role. I, you know, I, I've always, so in my 25 years of teaching now, I mean, I've always looked at my students as kind of my own kids. Um, and I, I, as a parent, I understand your concerns. Um, I have those and I share those same concerns as you as a parent. And so um, having somebody who on the inside knows the system and being able to help and get resources, um, I've spent uh, now 19, well, actually 25 years talking to teenagers. Um, I actually do a better job of talking to teenagers than I do anybody else. And you might be surprised that I'm actually a kind of a shy guy at times, um, but I, I love talking to teenagers. So uh, I, it's one of the things that I'm more than happy to sit down and, and, and it's one of the things that I do a lot when we're doing the face-to-face -face stuff is, um, I think one of the things actually I've come to learn is that being a teacher is more important about teaching a lot of life skills um, that all of my students grew up to become adults, but not all my students grew up to become biologists or doctors or dentists or veterinarians or nurses, but they all become adults. And I want them to be a um, functioning, literate, uh, data understanding, but uh, a compassionate person in, in as they grow up and learn those things. And um, sometimes we have to do those things through um, tough love and things and having some hard conversations, but um, it's something that I think I've done a very nice job of and it's, I will kind of toot my horn there a little bit, but um, I love talking to teenagers. So if you need something, I'd be more than happy to help. So again, a very long winded non answer. So <laughs> what else can I not answer tonight for you? I really do get better when we, when we get into the school year, I can give actually way more concrete answers to things. So how do you, how do you take attendance? <laughs> Boy, that's a, that's a, that was an interesting question. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I've actually just printed out my attendance sheets. I had to create a nice spreadsheet for it. And uh, the way that I'm going to do it, I'm going to try is uh, when students are in the uh, waiting room, like you are, then I can take attendance. And then when I take their attendance, I can admit them into the class. And then class doesn't start until I've admitted everybody into it. And that's how I take attendance. Um, we've also been talking about, well, what does attendance mean? So like, let's say they're not necessarily in the uh, 11 to 1145 timeframe, but they are doing the work. So they're maybe doing it at their own time. Um, do we um, modify and change the attendance um, through some uh, spirited discussion today on that one? It was determined that we're only take attendance for students who are present in the Zoom session. So if your son or daughter does not if you get an absent for that class period, it means they weren't in my Zoom. Does that make sense? So, um, I mean, in the end, it's not gonna really do anything. It's just, we have to take attendance. And so it's gonna be a difficult process. And again, this is how I think I'm gonna do it. Um, if it doesn't work after the first week, then we'll figure out a new way to figure out how to take attendance. So, uh, but that's how I'm gonna start it out, so. Did what else that, do you have for me today? On that attendance uh, point, yep. just wanted to mention something to think about is I've got four people in this house using the same bandwidth and, and I'm on Zoom meetings all the time and I notice when there's more than a couple of us that are in a Zoom meeting, the quality and sometimes it's hard, like you get disconnected and all of that. So if you're basing attendance and I've got four people on Zoom calls, one of us might get dropped all the time. So right. I, I don't you know, know what the solution is for that, but if the school is depending on, on the kids to be on all the time, 
I also need to be on for work and I'm, I'm in meetings all day. So. Correct. And that was one of the things that we were talking about is the fact that, you know, like, let's say they're not in the physical zoom meeting right now, but we know that they're accessing the materials later on. It's actually one of the great things about canvas is that I see everything your son or daughter does in canvas. I know every page they go to. I know how many times they access that page, how long they access that page. I have all of the information behind the scenes, which is the other reason why I love Canvas is because I see everything your kid is going to do. So you're right. If, if they're not in my class, but I see that they're going through and doing the work, right? They're staying on top of it. They're getting good grades. You know what? We're more than happy to cut slack on the attendance part. Again, it's not something that's a huge deal. Um, we, we do, we even acknowledge it today in our staff meeting is that it's not a perfect system. It's just something that we know we've got to try. Um, we did talk about like, can we go back and modify the attendance later on? And it, we can, um, but I, I, I get your point of it. Um, you know, I'm in the same boat here. I'm going to be teaching and I've got two students of mine who are going to be on Zoom meetings at the same time I am. So uh, we're all kind of in that same boat as well. So um, I would just say this, don't worry as much about the attendance as it is, are they doing the work? Um, and I think the big thing that I want to keep stressing and I'm going to be stressing to your son or daughter is um, one, uh, and this is what I say in class, I can only help when I know that they need help. I'm not a mind reader. Um, I don't want to read teenagers' minds. So, um, but I can only help them when they tell me they need help. So that's why I use Remind. Um, I love email. Um, so students don't even have to talk to me, quite honestly. They can just message me and say, hey, I don't get this. And I am more than happy to help. Um, you know, I know that some students would love to be able to talk face to face. And I know other students don't want to raise their hand in front of others because then they feel like they, they look silly or they don't look as smart as everybody else. And so they get nervous. And so therefore they don't ask questions. And I think using the remind has been a great feature because students can then just actually send me a note right in the middle of class. Hey, I don't get this. And only they know they've done it. And I know that they've done it and then I can help them. So the big thing I'm going to tell you is this, is that with the parent canvas app that you can see when the assignments are, when they're due, and if they've been turned in. And if you're starting to see a pattern that they're not turning in assignment, then one, I'm hoping you're having a conversation with them at home about it, but two, please, and I'll be, re I'll be reaching out to you and them to have that conversation of what's going on, how can I help? You know, what are some of the, the, the things that are holding you back from being successful? Um, the other message that I, and I've shared this with you before, um, and I'm going to continue to keep doing this is, um, this is, a, this is going to be hard. Um, this is going to be difficult. This is not going to be easy. And I know that for some students, they're going to be just fine with it. Um, my daughter is a great example. My daughter does fine with virtual learning. My son, on the other hand, that if I'm not sitting there watching him, he'll be playing video games and he won't do it. So I understand what you're talking about and, and the concerns in this. My job is to make sure that if I'm seeing patterns starting to you know, find and form, that I'm reaching out to them and to you to figure out what are some of the things that are um, hindering them and stopping them from being successful. But the other thing is this, it's going to be difficult. Um, and, and just because it's difficult doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. It just means it's going to take longer. And I like to use the term, maybe you're not able to do it yet. And it doesn't mean that we can't do it. Um, it just means that you're maybe not able to do it yet. And that we can build more capacity up so that it becomes easier to do. But this is going to be a long process for all of us, um, which is part of the reason why I'm talking with you now is so that you and I, you and I as parents, can establish a rapport and a relationship so that you feel comfortable in coming to me and I feel comfortable coming and talking to you about concerns that I have as well as their teacher. So um, yeah, this is, um, this is gonna be tough, but you know, I, I think we're gonna, we're gonna do and we're gonna make it through. The first week or two might be a little bumpy, but it'll get smoothed out. So, and I, I gave you the analogy last time is that, you know, and I, I I'm a coach. I've been coaching for 25 years. I, I use a lot of sports analogies, but I don't want to do that because not everybody likes sports. But, you know, if you want to climb a mountain or climb a hill, if you just keep looking at the top, you can get discouraged because you realize it's so far. 
but it's yet still just one step in front of the other. If you're willing to take one step and one step and the next step and the next step, eventually you get to the top of the hill and the top of the mountain. But if you stop taking steps, if you stop making the little progress, you never get there. And so that's the message that I'm going to keep sharing with your son or daughter is that, yes, this is going to be difficult, but each day is a little step. And if you're willing to move one little bit each day, we're going to get there. Um, so, and I'm a firm believer in that. Um, so, sorry, that was a long answer again. I have a question. Um, so, as, as far as the teachers that um, are, are part of your group, mm -hmm. um, is, is there four of you or three of you? There will be four of us. Okay. And then you said that um, depending on whether or not our child is, you know, I guess assigned to you for lack of a better term, the first quarter and then not the second quarter, like my daughter has you for the first quarter, but then the freshman um, students have biology all year, right? Well, no, just, this is just like, so this is a year long class. This is how the school has created the schedule. So our, um, you'll be only doing classes um, two, four, six, and eight first quarter. And then you're only doing classes one, three, five, and seven second quarter. It's still a year long class. We're trying to teach a semester of biology into a quarter. Oh, I see. Okay, so actual length of time is the first semester for the year long class. Correct. Oh, see, Which I is, wasn't so, so maybe that does kind of then maybe you understand why we're cutting out some material and because um, our instructional minutes is cut down by a third by two thirds. Actually, we only have a third of our instructional minutes from what we'd normally have for a semester, even in a day to every day meeting, we're really cut down. So this is the reason why we've had to uh, shrink, um, condense, and really focus in on some very important parts to our biology curriculum. But again, like I said, our goal is so that by come third quarter, we, we're back at school, kind of doing our everyday alternate schedule, um, where I'd be seeing your son or daughter every other day in the block form at 90 minutes, so where we can be able to do a lot more things with a lot more time and a lot more labs and things like that. So. Um, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see what January, the end of January looks like, so. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Yep. What else? Um, I have a question. Yep. So, are there, the assignments, are there going to be links to videos or some written ma material, or uh, are you going to do some lectures, too? So it'll be a little bit of both. Um, we're gonna try to do some flip things where we're gonna have the students watch some things the night before they come to class. And then maybe class kind of becomes a little bit more where they're asking questions about the material that they were supposed to learn the night before. It also will be, we're gonna be giving content for the very first time during that time frame, that 45 minutes of the Zoom meeting time. Um, also too, when we do the formative work, we're gonna be giving that maybe after class, you know, it's an after school thing there will always be resources that they're available. Um, like I've actually, I have a whole library of old lectures and things like that. Um, I, you know, so I'm attaching old lecture videos. I find YouTube videos. I find web links for just one formative thing that maybe take a half hour. And I probably have uh, like, I have a lecture that I talked for an hour on DNA replication. So if you can imagine me talking for an hour, which I'm doing right now, I guess you can imagine it. Um, but so, yeah, so there's a lot of resources that will be available there for students to be able to do the formative work and things. Yeah. It's not, we're not, it's not a sink or swim. There's a lot of, um, you know, I, I use the analogy that uh, we, we need to teach the kids how to swim and we start off in the shallow end and we, we, you know, we walk into our ankles and we get comfortable with that and then we move up to our knees and get comfortable with that. And, and you know, we're, we're teaching things along the way so that we're building the capacity so that when they, when we feel like we can let them go to the deep end, that we know they're going to be successful swimming. So we don't start in the deep end and push them in and hope that they can swim. So. Uh, what else? So basically, since this is an online uh, only school, so biology, at least in our schedule, is going to be just uh, in the first quarter, right? right. Mm -hmm. So, it depends on what hour it is, but yes. All right. 
And as you said, it's going to be about a third of the material covered. Well, um, we've pared it down. Yes. I mean, that's just going to be the reality of, of every class that they're taking is that the amount of information will be pared down. So, okay. And then, um, I guess depending on how things go with, you know, the whole situation, but, and then biology will be in second semester, uh, both quarters will have biology, correct? Well, again, we'll, we'll have to wait and see where we're at with all of this information on our pandemic and, you know, where Dane County is. If, if the numbers allow us to be able to come back to school, which we all hope that they do, then we'll be back in person and, and changing back to our old formats and our old curriculum and redoing a lot of labs and, you know, getting a lot of hands-on stuff. Um, but if it doesn't, and we have to spend the whole year in this format, then we'll go back to the third and fourth quarter being like what first and second quarter is. That I would see your son or daughter, if I see them first quarter, I'd see them third quarter. And if I see your son or daughter second quarter, I'd see them fourth quarter. So I, again, we, we need to wait and see. So, I, you know, that's really not until the end of January. It's the last week of January. So we have a, a wise ways to go in this one, um, but it's all going to be dependent upon where we're at. So. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Was this a good, uh, did, I, did, I, did I do okay with everybody tonight? I, I wasn't quite sure of my material and I, I um, oh, I did want to show you some Canvas things really quick. Do you got, can I give you like 10 minutes? Is it okay? If you don't, you can, you can leave. It's not, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Um, I'm getting bored too, probably sometimes listen to myself too. Uh, so here we go. Let's show you then uh, what this looks like. Uh, let's go to here. And then let's go to here. So you guys can all see my classes now, uh, see everything. I don't know how I get rid of this thing. Can I put this down here? Oh, good, I gotta put it down there, perfect. Okay, so uh, let's go to um, here, and then let's go to here. All right, so this is what my Canvas course looks like. This is actually what they call the dashboard. Um, this is what your students will kind of come to. This will be all of their classes. So they should be seeing four classes in what we call their dashboard. Um, when you want to do the pairing, you're going to go to the account, which will be their picture. And then you're going to go to settings. And from the settings, you're going to do this pair with observer right here, you're going to click that button and that gives you the code that Matt, you're are you going sharing? to need at the end yeah. of setting up your parent app. Does that make sense? Matt, are you sharing? We can't see it. Oh, you can't see? You might need to share a different screen. Um, I'm glad you guys told me that. Thank you very much. You know, we're going to try to figure this out. Now, can you see it? Can you see the screen? Yes. yes, we can see the yes. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so here we go. So uh, this is vasd.instructure.com. So when they go into Safari and type that in, they're going to get to this dashboard looking thing. Um, what I was going to show you is that when you set up the parent Canvas app and you need the observer pairing code, you're going to go to your son or daughter's account, which is going to be their picture, and you're going to click then on settings. And in the settings, you're going to go over here to where this says pair with observer. And you're going to click on that and you're going to get the code. And you're going to type that code in at the last part of the app. And once you hit done or accept or go or whatever it is, then you're going to see it. And it's going to, you're going to see then their dashboard. So you'll see every class that they see then you'll have access to. Now, the big thing that we're going to be doing is our calendar. And so you'll be able to click on this button in the calendar and it will take you to the actual calendar. Now, this is a quick example of what we're going to be doing is that each class will have a day then. So notice this says uh, biology, fourth hour. It starts at 10 o'clock. I then have biology, sixth hour, which starts at one o'clock and biology, eighth hour that starts at two o'clock. Now, these are all the exact same. I'm just going to click on this uh, one here and what they're going to do then is they're going to open up this day and I've then got the link for their biology zoom class right here. 
And then this is what we're going to be doing on the first day of school. We're going to do introductions and make introductions using uh, doing uh, Zoom. Uh, we're going to do what was the best part of their summer. And we're going to have them type it in their chat feature. Um, we're going to do what do they really need in their physical space to be successful at home learning and studying. So that's going to be, again, using the chat. We're going to play charades. Uh, so again, us being silly and stupid in Zoom. Um, then we're going to start talking about norms and all these different things. So again, lots of information there. But so if you go back to the calendar, now this is only my class, but your son or daughter and you will be able to see they actually should have, this is actually going to get really overwhelming, quite honestly, and we're going to need to refine it, I think. That's going to be my opinion on this, is that you'll see all four classes every day in the calendar. So this will get populated every day. Does that make sense? I can't see everybody. So just, yes. okay, perfect. Thanks for the, that choral response there. Appreciate that. So, um, so I've done the first week of school. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why we really want you to use the Parent Canvas app is this access to the calendar. Um, then when we have assignments, the assignments will be embedded into these parts but then you'll be able to see the assignment name, um, click on it and see it. And then you'll also be able to see if they've been turned in on time by, the, by your son or daughter. So um, the calendar part is a really important aspect um, to things. The um, other parts, and so this is just kind of what my um, class looks like. So when students come to my page, this is what they're going to see then. You can see my email address. So if you need to email me, you can either A, email me, or B, you can go to here. This is my classroom phone number. Um, so you can call. I will be there most days or leave a message for me. Um, and then I've put the schedule here. So my office hours are from eight to 10. I am gonna need to figure out how to do these things. I think the small group stuff, right, we're gonna um, kind of do with either another teacher. So we don't get into that one-to-one -one thing, but I wanna make sure that we're helping students, my students um, during this time. It says my second hour class is prep. So this is my time for grading, um, emailing to students and to you. Um, so every day from 10 to 1045 is my prep time where I'm gonna be um, grading the formative work, giving feedback to them and emailing them. And then this is where I'm also gonna be calling and emailing you, letting you know that, hey, maybe I have some concerns about what's going on with your son or daughter in class. You know, their quality of their work has been, you know, low or whatever it is, or you know, they don't seem to be as engaged. And so how can we help in that process? You notice that there's a transition time built in um, between each class so the kids can go to the bathroom, you know, get a drink, you know, whatever, get some screen, off screen time. And then my fourth hour biology class, and I will be putting the Zoom link meeting right here. So they can actually go to that or they can get it in the calendar. So trying to make it easy for everybody. Uh, then you can see lunch, then here's sixth hour from one to 145. And again, I'm gonna put the link here and I'll also have in the calendar. And then eighth hour link here and in the calendar. And then my office hours after school. I will be creating a link here. So for kids who are doing um, the test help and some questions on their formative work, I'll be doing a Zoom session from 3 to 3.30. And there'll be a link there that students can click on to get in to talk with me. And then from 3.30 to 4, I'll be doing some project help, where again, I'll be having a different link and students can click on that to get in and get help from me. So um, I'm really trying to make sure that between the morning and the afternoon sessions that students are able to then get in touch with me when they need it, and which is gonna be the, the big thing that I've been kind of trying to share with you guys today is that you know, the more help that we can all give, the better it's gonna be. Um, what it really does kind of look like then inside of it, just kind of the nuts and bolts. Um, this is what we call modules. This is how I build things. So um, this is kind of behind the scenes part for me that I do stuff with. Um, we're still in the process of creating um, some of the content and I'm trying to finishing up some of my content parts. I can just show you what that looks like really quickly, just so that you can kind of see that, what it's gonna be and look like. Um, I've been working on the DNA stuff. So like DNA graded practice. So like this will be the assignment. You can see the standards there that I'm gonna be covering that day, the learning objectives. So what the students will be learning that day in class the vocabulary words which will be covered that day in class. So not only will I be giving a lecture 
through Zoom on this topic, but I've also then found websites that would like for them to start reading about DNA. Here's this Nova journey into DNA, and here's this really cool little video that I found on YouTube about DNA, and then I have a homework assignment that will be linked here. And that's kind of what Canvas looks like then. Um, so you can kind of see like I'm, we have our own curriculum that we're building and using each day will look like this with the standards that we're going to be teaching. These are coming from our, um, what we call the NGSS, the next, the next generation science standards, which are national science standards and also to the Wisconsin state science standards as well. Um, and so this kind of is the backbone for our curriculum. And then we've broken it down into I can statements for students. So that by the end of the lecture, your son or daughter should be able to identify the structures of DNA and identify and describe the functional role of sugars, phosphate, nitrogen bases, and nucleotides in DNA at the end of this day. And then each day is different then. So the same structure of standards, learning objectives, and vocabulary words, what we call the order of learning resources that I will put in place for them to be successful, along with then a formative assignment then um, will change then through the, de the 10 days of content then. Um, I, so I can grade, I can do all my grading. I have a grade book inside of Canvas here um, that, uh, let's actually go back to this one here so that you can kind of see, uh, well, you can see everybody's, it's actually just got everybody's names and grades in it. It syncs with the Power School every night so that whenever I grade in Canvas, it'll automatically get updated into the Power School grade book every night. Um, what else do I need to show you anything about here? We will be doing discussions. Like this is a great feature inside of Canvas. Um, I'm gonna be doing a discussion of how are you feeling about starting high school? We're gonna do that on Thursday. Um, it's a place where students can then go and answer the question prompt and they can then also give replies to other students' comments. Um, it's a great way for us to do an online discussion. Um, I can do it as a graded assignment. I can do it as an ungraded assignment. I can moderate the whole thing. The great part about it is that when your son or daughter leaves a comment, it leaves their picture and a timestamp. So we are going to be talking about, you know, uh, rules of uh, what we call those norms of, you know, how do we act in a Zoom meeting? How do we use discussions and chat features? You know, um, making sure that we're being appropriate in our language, intentions, things like that. Um, so that's a really important aspect to this learning process with being the online stuff. Um, we'll be giving all of our tests through Canvas. Um, it's all going to be built in here. It grades it for me. So your son or daughter will get, literally they hit submit and they get an instantaneous score on the test. So they get to see how they've done on it like that. Um, I can build rubrics into this stuff. So there's a lot of things in here that I can build into this. So uh, Canvas has got a lot of kind of really cool parts for us, uh, which is one of the reasons why I love using it. So that was maybe way more than what you wanted to know, but you know, you kind of get at least an idea as far as why we love using Canvas and what your son or daughter is going to be able to do with it. And also too, what you're going to be able to see and do with it with the parent app. So, all do you right. Know a, do you know if there's a limit on the number of parent apps that can be shared with an individual student? No, like so if somebody um, has four or five parents or correct. If you have ever? multiple students in the district, you can add all of them. You will just need a different, I think, um, observer pairing code, but you can add multiple students into your parent account. Can you, do, yep. can you have five parents for one student? Um, e yes, because the, each parent would just need to create their own account, but then they're still pairing it with their student. Okay. So yes, you can get multiple people looking at one student. Great, thank you. Yep. All right, um, I can tell by the clock on the wall, it's now been an hour and 15 minutes that you have sat patiently and listened to me talk. Are there any more questions that you have for me tonight? You say, was, did you have one, Edward? Oh, no, 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 no. I oh, don't. okay. Just no, checking. No, no. Okay, cool. Uh, well, I'm going to do my old thing. Uh, anybody got more questions? Going once. Going twice. All right, done. Nice. Uh, so thank you very much. 
Um, I, as I mentioned to you before, this would be the last kind of general session that we're going to be doing. So if your son or daughter is in hours one, uh, five, I will not see you again until second quarter. Now, obviously, if you have some things you need to ask, you'd be more than happy to email me and things like that. Otherwise, um, I'll be seeing the hours two, uh, excuse me, four, six, and eight next week, Tuesday, after our first day of school. Um, so again, as always, I, I hope all of you are staying safe um, and uh, taking care of each other. Um, again, I know your son or daughter might not be super excited about the next, this last week. If your kids are anything like mine, they're not. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully once we get into things, their excitement will go up because we're going to do a great job with, with this process, with what we're being given. So uh, I feel very excited about this. I'm excited to, to uh, meet them and get started. And um, yeah, I literally can't wait. So although I am glad I get this whole week because I have a lot of things to do still, but I'm looking forward to seeing them. So uh, again, if you have any more questions, please feel free to call or email me during the week. And um, you can always, again, access any of the videos at my YouTube page at the bottom of my signature. And lastly, I guess that's about it. Okay. So thank you very much again for the evening. I really do appreciate it. Take care, stay safe, and uh, enjoy the uh, cooler weather and especially the coolest weather coming next week. So enjoy and take care. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Boxy doesn't suck. What's that? Take care. Good night.